Hello and welcome, folks, to All Stars Online Season 3. This week, we're joined by none other than 2017 World Brewers Cup champion, all the way from Taiwan, Chad Wang. Hi, everyone. This is Chad from Taiwan. I'm fine, thank you. It's really good seeing you, and it's really good to share this video with you through All Stars Online. I'm a very big fan, all the way from thank South you. Africa. Thank you. I'm keen to ask you a couple of questions and get a few answers from you. Um, but before we get into that, we'd first like to thank our sponsors. And for this episode, our sponsor is Chemex. Thank you so much for making this available for us, Chemex. Um, we're going to have a few videos coming up in this episode. Uh, we have our all-stars around the world answering some fun questions. We have Chad's signature beverage video, which I'm also very excited to see. And we also have a look back at a memorable moment in the World Coffee Championships. So stay tuned. Okay, we're going to start off with the all-stars around the world video. And then come back and chat with Chad about his coffee career and life in general. めっちゃくちゃ考えたんですけど、for sure, I would like to have hot water. So, for sure, I would like to have a kettle uh, boiling the water if I have energy. And then, uh, for sure, uh, one uh, brewing method like uh, a 60 or a clever dripper. Uh, and then a mocha pot just to make a fresh coffee. First, Commandante grinder. Second, Chemex and some kettle, I think I need it. Beh, se fossi su un'isola deserta, ovviamente il caffè e gli articoli che porterei indispensabili sono un grinder manuale, eh, dell'acqua potabile e un dripster, quindi un metodo di estrazione con acqua fredda e fresca per dissetarmi con dell'ottimo caffè. I would take along a grinder, scales and some sort of permafilter which I can use for ages without needing new paper and so on. This is difficult because I need a grinder, I need a kettle, I need an aeropress because it's nearly undestroyable. Uh, but then I don't know how to heat up the coffee and drink the coffee so I also need a kettle and kettle or grinder, I mean the stones could grind the coffee but not that well and I have to try it out. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, one of these things. Okay, that was so much fun. Chad, what's your answer to that question? If you were on a deserted island with three coffee brewing items, what would you bring? Only three. So if I had um, three brewing items with me on a deserted island, one of the first things that come to my mind would be fire. So I would bring one of those, you know, one of those burners that you use for a siphon that produces fire without electricity. I think um, that would be one of the first things that I'd bring. Also a brewing kettle would be very nice as well because it holds water and um, a water filter is essential because it produces clean water. So now I have fire, I have clean water, I have something to hold the water in. I think my chances of survival just significantly increased. What, what are you yeah. drinking over there? What, what's, what's in your cup right now? Uh, so I have a hot coffee from Jäger Sheffi. It's a wash process. I'm in the shop right now, so I had my barista make it for me. On, on that note, let's, let's get stuck into the questions, right? Sure. Let's get stuck into the questions. First up, sure. 
How long have you been in the coffee industry, Chad? I started off um, working in coffee in my father's company, a jazz cafe in Shanghai. That was back in 2014. Um, at first, I was quite reluctant, to be honest, because I had dreams to become a biologist. <laughs> But um, that being my family business, so I went. So I went. Um, I think it's very important that I tell you the full story about um, my background as well. I actually grew up in the UK, so I moved there when I was twelve years old, and um, I was educated there um, in such a manner that I was able to have freedom throughout the most the, the, the majority of my education. When I uh, developed an interest in biology all the way through up to university, I, I wanted to pursue a career in marine biology. However, <laughs> because uh, my father really wanted me to to work with them in coffee so he actually flew all the way from Shanghai to Manchester to persuade me to 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 enroll into food sciences <laughs> um, and being be, being a quite a traditional Asian family I I, I wanted to be respectful in that way so I agreed um, with them so I went into food sciences but I actually also found an interest there as well because a lot of the food safety and nutrition um, aspects of food sciences could be um, very much relatable to microbiology which I studied um, at undergrad so um, I did actually find my own passion there as well. And after my graduation, I, I, I went into Le Cordon Bleu in London to do patisserie. That was very, that was very much fun. Uh, so that opened my mind to actually working as a, as a chef of some sort in the food industry, which in turn <laughs> made making coffee make sense as my career path. So I went to, to, to work with them in Shanghai at Jazz Cafe. I was more of a quality control person in his company. And then I met with um, Stefanos Matiotis, the World Burst Cup champion of Greece in 2014. He, he inspired me to go and compete, so you know the rest. <laughs> when I went to compete in, um, in, in Dublin in 2016, I was world number three at the time, and then in, in Budapest and became champion. Uh, since then, I, I really felt like I gained my own voice in the coffee industry, so I moved back to Taiwan to open my own coffee shop. So let's let's start off with coffee competitions. We're not going to get too deep into it right now, but give sure. us a bit of background in why you like the competitions. Because early on, you said you went to your first competition, you enjoyed it, so you came back, and that's when the rabbit hole begins. Um, yeah. What you like about it, what got you hooked, but also if you can share what you don't like about coffee competitions. So what I like and dislike about the competition. So obviously the. World Brewers Cup is was a brilliant way for me to to focus on brewing. Um, it helped me learn and grow as a barista. I was able to to really dig into the world of understanding what a brew meant, uh, understanding what coffee brewing was how a barista communicates through his knowledge and his um, craftsmanship to make and to tweak with the flavors and 
uh, taste profiles of a coffee. So I would definitely recommend everyone to try to try the championship because it will help you grow in such a way that you can never imagine. I, I, I learned so much in the two years of my championship. Um, and my dislikes of the championships, well, I think with everything, there is always room for improvement, um, including um, our championship. And if I was to, to name something, I'd say the rules and regulations are there, of course, to, to guide our competitors and to guide our judge panel and to, to form the championship. But they're set in such a way at this point where some of our craziest imaginations could not be allowed or be, be performed, which in turn um, limits the way that we can present our coffee. But I think in 10 years time, this would definitely be a very different championship. And I'm sure that um, it will be more and more exciting. I agree. I agree. Exciting to see what the comp's going to be like in 10 years. So we've, we've got a photo up here that Chad's going to tell us a bit about. Um, I see Chad, it looks like he's in his natural habitat, brewing some coffee. Um, can you tell us a bit more about this photo, Chad, and where exactly is this? This photograph is me brewing in my first shop, VWI by Chad Wong in Taipei. Now I have three. I have Taipei, Taichung and Xinzhu. Uh, VWI basically means vapor, water and ice, which is the three states of water. That's great. Tell, tell us about VWI, Vapor, mm. Water, Ice. As we spoke about earlier, water is essential for survival. And in my opinion, and in any brewer's opinion, I think, um, water is very important because it consists, it, 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 your brew is consisted of 98.5% of water. So water is something that is some, uh, sometimes um, not talked about enough. That was the prime reason why I wanted to name my coffee shop after this very humble substance, but it's such import so important that I think everyone should understand. Um, Wasser also for me has some philosophical um, meanings because it's... Um, it sustains life, it sustains our planet Earth. So I, I wanted it to um, represent the aspects of uh, sustainability and also purity and a sanctuary, basically, of... Um, so the cafe is a sanctuary of uh, specialty coffee. Is that what's taking up most of your time right now? Do you have any other projects on the side you can tell us about? What's, what's well, happening? Well, it's been a very exciting year for, um, for me since 2017. And um, last year, I think there were a few memorable projects that I can talk about because I worked very closely with some international brands and I, I, um, I was very proud <laughs> of those projects. So uh, the three that I'm going to mention, the first one being a crossover with the Italian luxury brands Bulgari. Um, I, I uh, was able to convince the Italians to do a crossover with me <laughs> um, in the form of coffee drip bags. Um, they produced the, the design and I, I produced the coffee. And you know how Italians are when it comes to coffee, they have this <laughs> very specific um, need. So for me as a Taiwanese coffee barista, uh, to, to have this uh, approved by them was, uh, was really an honor. And they're such a professional team. It was such a pleasure to work with them. Yeah, it was fun. 
Um, I was also able to, to cross over with um, a British brand, which I used to work for, All Saints. <laughs> I used to be a retail retailer, um, sorry, not retailer. I used to be a sales assistant at All Saints in London and Manchester. So um, I, I set up a pop-up bar with them in Taipei, which was um, an honor to my university days as well, <laughs> where I sold their clothes and now they're selling my coffee. Um, I, I also work closely with BMW because um, they, they have taken an interest in, in coffee and I made a, I, I filmed a couple of commercials for them as well in Taiwan so um, for me that was that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we're going to move over to Chad's signature beer video. Um, would you like to, to chat? This beverage that I made is called uh, Yuan Yang. And um, it's a very traditional drink in which you infuse coffee and tea together. I think that really represents uh, who I am because I'm Asian and I grew up in the UK. So I have a very um, westernized mentality. Uh, this fusion between tea and coffee, I think, represents that as well because tea is a very traditional Asian beverage and uh, coffee was popularized in the West. So mixing the two together uh, is, uh, is a tribute, I think, for me to myself. <laughs> And also, this drink is so nice that every, and so easy to make that everyone can make at home. That's the, that, that's the reason why I wanted to, to, to demonstrate this in this video. <laughs> Good evening, this is Chad from Taiwan. Today I'm going to share with you my signature beverage called Yun Yang. This is a traditional drink in which you infuse coffee and tea together. So it's nice and simple. Uh, what we have here are a list of ingredients. As you can see, here's my tea. I'm using Ceylon today um, for a very strong black tea taste. And uh, here's washed heirloom from Ethiopia, which is my coffee. The brewer that I'm using is Chemex because Chemex produces a very nice brew with strong body, high sweetness. I pre-ground the coffee, but it actually doesn't matter. You can grind freshly if you, if you can. It's just that my grinder is downstairs and it can't be bothered going down again. So I'm going to start by demonstrating how to fold your Chemex filter paper. It's a bit of origami and I love it. So what does Yuan Yang mean? Yuan Yang, huh? What does Yuan Yang mean? Yuan Yang is... Uh, you know those ducks that you eat? Those ducks that you find at Hyde Park? Um, the ones with the green head. And um, you see a, an ugly one, that brown. They're Yuan Yang. So it's basically ducks. But Yuan Yang can also mean um, something like Yin Yang. Like Yin, yin Yang. <laughs> yin, so it's basically a, the Opposite, opposite attraction. Okay, I have one pre-made right here, just in case I make a mistake in the video. So, um, I'm gonna start by brewing the tea. So, I'm gonna make a strong brew. So there's 10 grams of tea leaf, and I'm brewing using 95 degrees of water. The ratio will be one to 10. So. It's going to be a hundred mils of Ceylon tea. Let's give it a little swirl and let it sit. Doesn't really matter how long you brew for. Now I'm going to take the time to make the coffee. Again, this has to be quite a strong brew. So I'm using 10 grams uh, of ground coffee to 100 mils of water. 
you don't actually have to make too much of either because we're going to put the two together later on. Okay, here we go. Just gonna give it a little time to bloom. So that'll be around 20 seconds for this cup of coffee, but you know, the bloom time depends on how freshly your coffee is roasted and your roasting level and so on and so forth. So it's up to you. Just make a nice brew. And there's really not much technique used here. I'm just doing my uh, center pour. Just let it filter. While my tea is brewing, my coffee is filtering, I'm gonna add some of my ingredients in. So first I have 15 mils of fresh milk. In. I'm gonna put two cubes of sugar. This is a sweetened beverage. And here we have some condensed milk. You can buy this from most grocery stores, but um, again, it's very thick and very sweet. But it gives a. Okay, it's not coming out. <laughs> Oh dear. Come on, milk. Okay, there we go. We're gonna use five grams here. And it's gonna give a nice buttery flavor. Can we use more? Um, I wouldn't recommend it. This is very sweet. But hmm. Hmm. I think you can also replace this condensed milk with custard. It actually has a very custardy taste. It's nice. Okay. Um, I'm gonna add my boba in. Add as much or as little as you wish. I'm gonna add all of it because I love it. The traditional version actually doesn't include baba in this milk tea, but because we're in Taiwan now, and baba is Taiwanese. I don't know, didn't know that. I don't know if you know, but baba was invented in Taichung. Add my brew. Just gonna add forty mils here. And you want the hot tea in here so that it actually melts and infuses all the other ingredients. You need the heat to melt the sugar, basically. Give it a swirl. As many swirls as you need to melt the sugar. I can see the lumps still, so I'm gonna do some more. the easiest beverage that you'll see on All Stars Online. <laughs> Anyone can make this at home and I do encourage that you try, it's very good. A one-to-one -one ratio of tea and coffee, so I'm gonna add 45 mils of freshly brewed coffee. ice cubes. I like to have this um, cold, but you can also have it hot. <coughs> For the hot version, you just put more coffee and more tea. And uh, for the final step, I have some cold foam. It's just made using a French press by going like this constantly. Oh. 
of my screen. Okay. Voila. A nice dusting of grounded Ceylon. Ta-da! How do you say yummy in Chinese? Man? 好吃，好喝。<laughs> What a fun video, Chad. I I've quite the sweet tooth as well, and I like the the condensed milk edition. Um, mm -hmm. I'm definitely gonna try it. I just need to get my hands on some bubble tea here in South Africa. So you have bubble tea in South Africa. You can go into the shop and just um, uh, you uh, perhaps buy the boba on its own. And if they don't sell it to you, <laughs> yeah, you can buy the tea as well and just drink drink the tea and leave the boba. <laughs> But you can actually buy dried ones as well from any convenient, uh, any Asian convenience store. Now, this this is what I've been waiting for: is to ask you a few specific questions about barista competitions. Um, sure. You you competed twice, right? Tell us yeah. what what was it like competing on the world stage? Maybe in comparison to competing locally in, in Taiwan. Sure. So, to many surprise, I think. Competing in the nationals was way more <laughs> terrifying than in the worlds. Um, in 2016, when I first competed, I I went on stage with such pressure that everyone in the industry already knows my family. <laughs> they already know my mum. They know my dad. They I I was afraid that they have a preconception of. Who, who who Chad was, and they probably did, and I I wouldn't blame them because um, my my parents have worked in the industry for over 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 fifteen years by the time I competed, so they 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 have friends, they have foes, <laughs> and I wasn't a, I wasn't sure how that was going to affect me, um, so. I also didn't want to. I, I wasn't just representing myself. I didn't want to let them down. So that in turn put a lot of pressure on me. Um, I was lucky enough to be crowned champion that year. Uh, went to Dublin. Actually, I I wasn't I wasn't very nervous when I was in Dublin because I didn't know how far I was going, <laughs> and. To me, the experience um, was all that mattered. I I wanted to to feel the atmosphere. I wanted to to um, pat myself on the back for for going so far. So actually, I I was pretty relaxed when I was in Dublin. Um, I turned out number three. I was really happy, like. Um, Yesterday I was just a barista, and today I'm world number three. So for me, I didn't for one minute think I should have been champion. Like for um, I I have quite a Zen mentality actually. That some sometimes what happens happens, and if you were number three in the world, you you are the happiest person. You are the you are the happiest number three in the world. So that was me in 2016. In 2017, again, <laughs> I was very nervous in the nationals because I was thinking, okay, so here are the judges thinking, here's world number three in the world coming to compete, and he was the champion last year. So what? So what? What was? What's he gonna bring for us this year? I I was so afraid that I 
wasn't impressive enough to the judges <laughs> in 2017. Um, I, I had prepared myself quite a lot before the championship, and but when I was on stage, I was shaking. My hands were shaking as I was brewing. I was so nervous, even more nervous than the first time. But again, I was lucky enough to be to become champion. And for Budapest, you know, I, I was just I, I was just singing for in, in, in my mind. I just wanted to I just wanted to to show the stage, show the judges that I have this amazing coffee experience to bring. I was so confident. I wasn't confident in that sense that I was becoming champion. It's not like that at all. I was just confident that I, there is nothing more I can offer you at this time, of, at this point of time. So I was just being myself. So um, as everyone probably can see now on YouTube, um, for the 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 competition that I I was just you know I was just happy. <laughs> so I've I've watched your comp routine, um, and I think. It was really inspiring to see how service focused it was and how you relayed that service. Uh, could you go into a bit more detail about the coffee, but also about the routine specifically? I wish I was a judge, just let me tell you that. So for the World Brewers Cup Championship, there are two main categories that we have to compete in. So one of the first ones, well, the, the first one is the compulsory service in which all the baristas brew the same coffee using the same water. Um, that is a way of demonstrating how good a brewer you are because all we could, um, the, the, all we could do was choose how we brew the coffee and using dif different brewing methods to present or um, to present a coffee that is none other than um, the one that you, you bring. So that part of the championship required the competitor to really understand how to manipulate with the taste of coffee in such a way that you elevate what's important and on the score sheet, you can tell that acidity and body um, and balance are what the judges are looking for. So first of all, understanding the score sheet, understanding how to brew accordingly so that you get high marks there. That was something um, that the compulsory service would, would um, distinct the champion from the rest of the baristas. So. Once you pass that, you, obviously you're a good brewer, which then leads to the open service. Because in the open service, what the judges tend to look for is not just a good brewer. We are looking for someone who could represent the WCE and represent the WBRC. So communication then becomes very important. Communication uh, would lead to to customer or, or is linked to customer service. What I really tried was not just bring, um, not, not just serve the judges because that was what I did in 2016. Um, I got really high marks actually in the customer service in, in both years. Um, what, what other things would be relatable to a coffee service and it's not just about the taste experience because we have the top uh, part of the score sheet that defines your brew the bottom part for me really was where we could um, exceed and um, exceed beyond the brew basically i i tried a lot to dig into who I was and what sort of service and what sort of aura I could offer that is different to everyone else. So 
I looked into people who I admire. <laughs> there are two examples that I can give you right now. So one of、uh, one of them is my favorite singer. She is a Chinese singer called Fei Wong. I wanted to、uh, I wanted to understand how she is so inspiring and so encapsulating when while she is on stage singing. So I wanted to have her aura while I was on stage, <laughs> and the other person is Bruce Lee. Everyone knows Bruce Lee. You obviously know Bruce Lee, <laughs> and if you go on YouTube, you will see a video, an interview video in English of him when he first went to Hollywood. The way that he spoke is so charismatic. And so, so mesmerizing. That was something that I wanted to 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 show as well in the championship. So, those were my two idols and my inspirations. And I think that in turn、uh, made my coffee service a lot more comfortable、um, and a lot more interesting. <laughs> Other than this coffee and this business that keeps you busy, busy,、um, what what does Chad do outside of all of this? You'll like, able you you'll be able to find me in、um, the three shops. So I'm usually in Taipei on weekdays and、um, in the other two shops at weekends.、Um, I I usually take Monday or Tuesday off and I stay home mostly. <laughs> I try to I try to to do some exercise like I try to go hiking I try to go to the beach where I I、um, can really relax but you know sometimes you just get so lazy you just want to stay 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 in bed and watch Netflix <laughs> I do enjoy Netflix a lot I just、um, finished Behind Her Eyes which is a very good series I recommend that people can、uh, people should watch it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chad.、Um, I really enjoyed that, folks. I'm sure you enjoyed it well as well.、Um, one more time, we'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, Kimix. Thank, thank you very you, much, Kimix, for making this possible.、Uh, we're going to go over to our next video now, which is a look back at memorable moments in the competitions. And this week, we're going back to the World Coffee Championships in Brazil. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, I am Silvia Tobon. I had the opportunity to judge in a world competition in 2018, and my favorite memories from the event in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. It was in a, a exciting experience because it was my first time as a, a judge in a world championship.、Um, it was very nice event. I could meet. Wonderful people from different nationalities, cultures, knowledge, and I learned about all of them. In general, I felt that the Brazilians immediately opened their arms for all of us. When we did the finals, and we had the final six for brewers, there were such an amazing group of competitors with. Such amazing routines, and、um, I rem- I still talk about two of the coffees that I had during that finals,、uh, where I was lucky enough to be one of the sensory judges. Where second place Regine Regina, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, from Malaysia. She had this coffee that had, and she made it with a siphon, and it was such a strong aroma of guava, and it lasted. For hours, so we took the coffee backstage. We put it down, continue evaluating and judging, and after 30 minutes, you could still smell the guava in the glass, and it was the most intense, fruity. Like it smelled like pink guava, like like no other way to describe it, and it was so spectacular. And then Emmy's coffee. Which was a Brazilian coffee, and how fun it is it to have this amazing Brazilian coffee win in Brazil was such a great, great surprise.、Um, I think 
it's still the best coffee I've ever had. And the way she explained the processing and explained uh, in easy words in a presentation of 10 minutes how the entire fermentation system worked for this coffee, explained how that affected the acidity on hot, cold, was inspirational. So Brazil was crazy because I started it off where I had a 14 hour layover in Florida. And I was like, you know, it's a really good idea. I should go to Disney World for the 14 hour layover. So I flew to Orlando, rented a car, went to Disney World for 10 hours, got back in the car, got to the, ho got to the airport. And it was uh, like daylight savings. The guy at the counter made me so anxious because he's like oh daylight savings happened so you're an hour behind like you're not two hours early for your flight you're only an hour early for your flight because i was like but daylight savings is tonight he's like yeah but it already happened in brazil and i'm like that doesn't that doesn't even make any sense so i ran to the gate and i get there and they're like yeah, we're leaving in like 90 minutes i don't know why you're sweaty and i'm like <laughs> the guy at the counter confused me so then flew to brazil got in a taxi, got to the hotel and it was morning. It was like eight o'clock in the morning because we flew overnight and everyone was like, oh, there's this like festival, like fair, we should go. So then we just went, didn't sleep at all. And then there was like carousel rides and stuff. So we then rode all of these, you know, rides that had been there for probably, you know, a very long time. And I just remember being like, that was, probably the weirdest start to a competition ever because I was up for like 48 hours straight. It was a huge backstage with uh, Brewer's Cup, La Terra Coffee Good Spirits, which of course comes with its own challenges because you have, especially during like day one and two, you have so many people in the backstage area and that can be challenging. But I remember on finals day that the energy in the backstage room was uh, a lot of fun because everyone had just been together basically for the whole competition because um, we were on these shuttle buses going back and forth from the hotel and then we were just there at the venue until late at night so I, I think it created like a different camaraderie than it does sometimes in other backstages when there's lots to do or you're not also on a shuttle bus together every morning. I think we had a sensation of team, all of different nationalities. It was an exchange of knowledge, a culture of different experience around coffee, and we truly enjoy each presentation and of every coffee of every judge. Great video. That event looked like so much fun. I think there's a lot of memorable things that happened at that coffee championships. Dan winning twice, um, Emmy winning with the Brazilian coffee in Brazil. We've got a we've got another video coming up, and this is our last video. Um, it's from 2019 uh, World Cup Tasters finalist ja Dajo Ertsen. There we go, Dajo Ertsen, and he's going to be talking to us about stress management and mindfulness in coffee competitions, which is very very good advice for all competitors. Let's have a look. Welcome to the second episode on stress management and mental training for coffee. In this episode, we're going to do a little test. See if you're more or less sensitive to stress uh, for, for competition. So let me ask you to do the following. Watch a World Coffee Championship performance in the category you're planning to perform at. And try to analyze how you feel watching that performance. Do you feel positive, excited, wanting to be there yourself? Or do you rather feel anxious? After that, close your eyes and imagine the same setting, same audience, but it's you who's there. It's you who's doing the, the competition. And once again, analyze your feelings. Are they more positive or negative? If they're positive, you may be not in need of any mental training. You're, you may be just, there's a lot of people who don't need it. Uh, but if you're anxious, then I think you can benefit from the next exercises. The goal will be to 
transfer these negative feelings which you as associate to stress, to negative performance, to positive feelings. Think that your body is preparing for competition. Um, the blood flow is increasing, it's going to your brain. It's actually really natural uh, feelings that, you, that can be really positive uh, for competition. So our goal will be to transfer these negative feelings of anxiousness to positive feelings of excitement and being prepared to do competition. I think that, that video, I think, is, is something that a lot of competitors can learn from because um, of the stress in Barista competitions. Um, I think we've seen a couple of videos come on the Barista competition specifically, but I think it, it accounts for any form of competition at not even just the world level, but sometimes as, as low as a regional level. Um, the stress levels are often something that takes over um, and it just it doesn't really help when you get on stage. Uh, Chad's going to be live on the Barista Guild Instagram. Um, yeah. We'll be chatting some more about his coffee career. Um, sure. Come on there, ask some questions, and we'll see you then. Chad, Chad Wang, thank you so much for your time, man. Like I said in the beginning, it's, uh, it's my <laughs> interviewing and to hear your insights and your thoughts and all of that. Um, we hope you enjoyed the folks. Uh, Chad, would you like to say goodbye? All right, guys. Bye. <laughs>